I feel a warmth within me. I can't describe it. No, 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 no. But I believe.
fun <laughs> fun that it's over huh whatever but you know what Dana and I were talking last night we had a pretty good 2021 it was I'm, I'm very thankful the Lord um, he can make he can make uh, beauty out of ashes we're gonna he can turn graves into gardens they're gonna sing that in a minute but uh, we had a pretty good year we raised a couple hundred chickens we raised a couple dozen rabbits we Okay, so that wasn't necessarily the best part. Our kids moved home. Um, we got a new grandbaby. We, uh, you know, we had, we, we left Legacy and came to Lewis Lane. Uh, just, <laughs> there was just a lot of things that happened uh, last year that's pretty cool. So, and I don't know, let's see. I don't think I knew a single one of you before this, in, before 2021. And I got a whole new family now. Isn't that cool? Amen. That's the way the Lord does it. Amen. Oh, sorry, Darren. I knew Darren. Uh, yeah, Darren and Sarah. Yeah, I knew them. But uh, 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 I knew them. Let's, um, and that's a different story. Um, <laughs> amen. Let's stand. I want to just do our announcements real quickly. I want to tell you, thank you so much for all you that came and helped us uh, tear down decorations and put, put them away. That was that was a that went a lot smoother than we thought it would and very thankful for that in case you are wondering we will have our uh, <laughs> our inclement weather plan in case we ever have inclement weather this year uh, and it actually snows um, we will put we'll put that up it'll be on facebook by 8 a.m and then wednesdays we just follow uh, owensboro public schools so that'll let you know what we're doing there. But we'll have Sundays up by 8 a.m. On, on our Lewis Lane Facebook page. Amen? Uh, amen. Let's, let's pray. Let's, um... Are you cool? Did I miss one? No. Oh, I thought I missed something. Uh, the, um, it, I like doing this, you know, if y'all haven't figured this out. So reach over and join hands with somebody near you if it's appropriate, if you're okay. Uh, and let's pray. Father, we love you. We just thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your mercy, all that you do for us. We just thank you for a new year, an opportunity to worship you today, begin, all, begin this year in worship with your family and our, our family, Lord. I just pray that your blessings on this service and throughout the year in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. One, two, three, four. All right. Well, I had to seek the Lord. What's the first that I a song I want to sing this year, Lord? What are you leading me to do? And this is and this is what he said. I heard an old old story how a savior came from glory. How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me Here we go! I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning I repented of my sin And won the victory Oh, victory in Jesus My Savior forever Softly and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. 
How he made the lame to walk again And caused the blind to see And then I cried, dear Jesus Come and heal my broken spirit And somehow Jesus came and brought To be the victory Let's sing it out Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. Oh, He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. He is built for me in glory And I heard about the streets of gold Beyond the crystal sea About the angels singing That old redemption story And some sweet day I'll sing up there The song of victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Let's sing that again. Oh, victory in Jesus, come on, Earth. my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming one. He loved me and I knew Him, and all my love is to Him. He plunged me to victory in the cleansing flood. Ushers, if y'all could come on down, please. Amen. First, the Sunday of a new year. What's it going to look like? I don't know, but I know who's in control. Jesus has this, doesn't he? He's had it the last, well, he's had it all of our lives and from, the, from the beginning. He's a great Lord, isn't he? Hey, let's just pray. God, we do thank you for the this stillness of this moment. As we reflect a little bit on the past so that we may learn some lessons. But we're looking forward to the future. Our hand is on the plow. And we're following you, Lord. Oh, how you blessed us in these past years. Oh, how your arms have been around us. Oh, and you've never failed us. And we can say that with confidence as we enter this new year, Lord. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, you loved us so much, and we love you. So right now, God, we just want to give back a little bit of all we have from you. Say, God, we love you. We want to live for you. We want to obey you. But most of all, God, this is a symbol of my faith in you that I can give to you and trust you. Oh, Lord, we just love you and thank you for all the blessings. We're excited about these coming days, no matter what happens, because we know you're God. And everybody said, you can be seated, please.
You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your bread and our love. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your bread. And I love, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness, you give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your bread and our love. So we pour out our praise. Pour shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you Lord and all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great
I'm overwhelmed by the presence of God this morning. You can search and search and search. And you can play church and church and church. But He's real. He's authentic. This, song, this next song is a little bit of my uh, personal testimony. I'll try to sing it for you. Satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. For there's nothing, nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you see them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. There's not a place mercy. Find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Let's sing that again. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing better than you, for there's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing, you give beauty. Ashes, you turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You 
children born to dance You give me beauty to ask You turn shame into glory You're the only one Turn graves into gardens. You turn bombs into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who cares. church oh yes crazy shall I start thinking about his love for us. That probably says it about as good as you could, doesn't it? 
How marvelous. But it's like the songwriter is searching for big enough words. How marvelous. How wonderful. And he's trying, but it just seems like our words don't even, they're, they're not even enough. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's all we can say. Look, look to heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Amen. Amen. We're, let's read a scripture while you're, if you're not standing, if you're able, I ask that you would. Uh, we'll read a scripture to begin this, um, doing a series, beginning a series today on identity theft. I believe that the, probably the biggest thing that has happened to the church is that we don't, we no longer know who we are. And it is so important that we understand our identity in Christ. And so I want us to talk about this for a few sessions. We'll see how long. God bless you. Thank you all for being here. God bless you. Uh, we'll, I'm going to preach a little more brief this morning, and then we'll have, uh, have communion to begin the year right. Amen. Thank you for all you did during Christmas, during the holidays. Uh, we just had a great time. So Hebrews 1 3a, just the first part of it, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. And uh, Janet, let's go ahead and put up Colossians 1 and 5. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Obviously, we're talking about Jesus. So let's pray. Father, thank you for your blessings, your mercy, your love. Thank you for uh, our identity in you and I just pray for great understanding and great openness into our hearts and minds that you would just plant this word, plant this seed deep in our hearts and let it grow and we would know exactly who we are in you. In Jesus name Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. As I said, one of the most important things we can ever do is to realize who we are in Him. Uh, and so the scriptures that we read are referring to Jesus. Uh, there's no man's ever seen God because God is uh, a spirit. Yet when we understand who Jesus is, we understand that He is the express image of that invisible one and that's what the two scriptures said that we began with that it, it it's so they're, they're, it's so intriguing it's so uh, humorous if you will when we begin to understand what God how God puts things on paper uh, just go back if you would to the very first words in the Bible it says he told Moses write these words in the beginning God there was no one there to prove he was there and he didn't even try he just said write this in the beginning I was there whenever you want to say it began I was sitting there I was already there. And there's just, it, it just, because he knows who he is, he wants us to know who we are, and then we can act in the same confidence that he can act in. That's why, that's why I want us to know who we are. Most of us would agree that we begin, when we begin to discuss image, our image of someone, then we would quickly arrive upon our face. Or upon what we look like, body type or body size or something like that. When they crucified Jesus, the scripture says that they beat him so badly that in Isaiah 52, 14, it says this. But many were amazed when they saw him. His face was so disfigured, he seemed hardly human. And from his appearance... One would scarcely know he was a man. That's how much they beat him. I, I think I've told you this before. Um, the, when Mel Gibson came out 10, 15, whatever it was years ago with the, the Passion of the Christ movie. Uh, how many of you watched that? 
No, several haven't. I haven't, and I haven't on purpose. I mean, I think we may even own the movie, but I haven't, I haven't done it because of the, I just don't, I don't like that idea. I don't want to watch that. I don't even, even though it's not even close to what Jesus really looked like. He was, it, it, the scripture says you couldn't even tell he was a man. He was beaten so much. So why would they do this? And I propose the reason they would do this is just simply answered to us in Isaiah 14 and 13. The scripture writes about Lucifer. He said, for you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountain of the gods far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the most high. Lucifer wanted to be like God. And so the next few verses help us understand that that didn't happen, and we know that. But since Lucifer couldn't be like God, he has set out to destroy the ones, everything that is like him for everything that is in his image. You see, we have been made in his image also. We'll go to scripture right now on that. But when God, Jesus was made in his image, he wanted to destroy that image. And in, first, in Genesis chapter 1, 27, the first part of that says this. So God created man. Say, that's me. Say, that's me, man. For, say, that's me. So God created me in his own image that fair geometry law of substitution okay so so God created man he created each of us in his own image first Corinthians 15 and 49 as we have born and as we have borne the image of the earthly we shall also bear the image of the heavenly we are in his image but not just physically because I think it's so neat that in Genesis 1 and 27, the God who had no, uh, had no skin knelt down into dirt and made a man out of skin. Made skin cover a man. <sighs> so, not only is it that we're after his earthly, we're also after the heavenly. So, you and I have been made in the image of God. Yet, Scripture lets us understand that sin has marred the image when I, when I go to the airport, uh, I meant, I, would, I could do it and you'd never know. This is my, this is my driver's license. Uh, you'd probably figure that out. I meant to bring my driver's license this morning. Uh, the whole message is ruined. Let's go home. When I go to the airport, I show them my ID to prove my identity. When I go to the doctor's office, I show them my ID to prove my identity. Wherever I go that I got to prove who I am, I show them my ID. Why? How? It has my picture on it. It has my image. Fair? So it has my likeness. It has an image of it. How do I prove who I am? I show my ID. But what if I needed to prove who I am and my ID didn't match what I say? Or who I say? Or Because, you know, I've got green eyes. And after all, I am Caucasian. <laughs> That's... Uh, and, and we know I don't have much hair, and we certainly know I couldn't grow a black beard. We showed a picture of my brother last night, and uh, it was it was all it was Kenny Rogers uh, looking good. And I was like, I can't even laugh because if I grew one, that's what I would look like too. So we, you see, if you alter the image, you wouldn't even know who I am. If I if you went to the airport and you took a picture of me with you and you were going to pick me up from the airport and you looked at that picture and that's what I looked like on the left as compared to what the picture you had of me on the right you would think I was in witness protection and you'd never be able to figure out who I was 
Because the image has been altered. The image has been changed. Does that, does that make sense? You see, if I look in a mirror and I see the wrong picture, then I will start to believe that I am someone other than who I actually am. <laughs> Sin has changed the image. Sin has changed our image and therefore when we look in the mirror, we see someone who we really aren't. Hmm. I will believe that I am someone other than who God made. Because the image is distorted. House of mirrors, the fun house, the... Uh, um, Gatlinburg, what's the, what is it? What's the plate? What is it? The House of Mirrors, what's the name of it? Circus? No, what's the House of Mirrors thing? You know where you walk in and you got one message on it. Maybe it's just the House of Mirrors. And it's, it makes us look like something that we're not. I will begin to believe that I'm someone other than who God says I am. You see, now I believe I'm someone other than the one that God made and the image has been changed. I no longer reflect the image. I'm a no longer a reflection of his image. I was made in his image, but that image has been changed. And so now I am no longer a reflection of his image. Sin has changed me into someone that God had not planned, did not plan for me to be. Think about that for just a minute. Sin changed me into someone that God did not plan for me to ever, ever to be. That's why we've got to get sin removed from our lives. Somebody help me say amen. We've got to get sin removed. Gen Jeremiah chapter 1 verse number 8. I'm sorry, chapter 1 verse 5. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. I think this is so cool. Before God let Jeremiah's mama give birth to him, God put an image on him. And Jeremiah in kindergarten, when he went to kindergarten, he said, what do you want to be when you grow up? Jeremiah could tell them anything he wanted to be as long as he said, I want to be a prophet. He could say anything he wanted as long as he understood that it was to be a prophet. Because that is what God made him to be. Leave that up for just a minute, Janet. The, this is so important. That we understand who God made us. You know, I'm, I'm trying to lay a little bit of groundwork this morning knowing that we've got a, a couple more sessions coming on this. But I, I, it is so important that we understand who God made us to be. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and to give you a hope. God has a, had a plan for his people then. God has a plan for his people now. And God has a plan for you. Every person under the sound of my voice in this building today, every person watching online live and every person watching in the future, God has a plan for you. And when sin is removed from our lives, the image of God is restored. <laughs> That's why, and we'll talk about this one more later, uh, in a different lesson of this. But this is, that's why I say, I, I no longer say I am a sinner saved by grace. I was a sinner. Now I am a son. Or now I'm a daughter. Sometimes y'all going to have to just get over it when I say you're a son because I'm the bride. Okay? I'm the bride of Christ, so I got to get over that too. So that just, when I... When you, <laughs> 
Now I'm a son. Now I'm a daughter. Because I have been restored to the right relationship. Now I'm back where God said and God made me. God, who God made me to be. I got a question for you. Who were you supposed to be? How, how did God make you? In what image, what destiny did he put on you before the world got a hold of you and misshaped the image? Standing today at whatever current age you are, is this the plan that God made before your mama gave birth to you? Well, now, I just ask it. It's just a question. Because I believe that when God, remember, God doesn't live in time. And so when I believe that when God restores us, removes the, the sin from our lives and restores his image, then he's able to restore the plan and the purpose. And the scripture says that even the reaper can overtake the, the sower because that God can do a work so quickly Somebody's out sowing, the person is coming behind reaping. We understand that that could be a, a matter of weeks or maybe even months beforehand. But the scripture says that God is going to begin to speed up the process so much so that the reaper is going to catch up with the dude that's sowing. You see, God can do that in our lives. He can restore us. He doesn't live in time. He can just pick us up and drop us right where we're supposed to be, perfected in that place of what God said, this is who I ordained you to be. Yeah, but, but I've, I've had a rough 50 years. I've had a rough 20 years. I've had a rough 60 years. I've had a, I've had a rough time. Cool. Caleb walked up to his buddy Moses and he said, I'm 80 years old, and I don't even want your help. Just tell me it's okay to go take my mountain. And if you study Caleb's life from there forward, he, he conquered more land and killed more enemies after he was 80 than he did before he was 80. Yeah, but it's not fair. He was eating angel food cake every day. Okay, whatever. The image has been restored. That's why it's so important to get the sin out of our lives. That's why it's so important to live above and not beneath. Mm. I, I'm with Frank. The, just a few minutes ago, he was standing and he was weeping. I was, sitting, I was standing right there and I was crying. And it was, I, I've said this in my relationship with my wife. I do everything I can to make sure that I don't mess that up. Okay? It's, I, I mean, down as far as I can, just down to the, down to the smallest detail. When I come in from, from a, a, a long day of, a, or a, a game of refereeing and, 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 I don't, and I'm sweaty and I don't smell real good, I don't come running up to her and grab her and squeeze her and put her head down in my chest and squeeze her. I don't do that. Some people think that's funny, and if you think that's funny, that's the way y'all roll, do your thing. I don't care. Before I get very close to her in the mornings, I make sure that I have brushed my teeth. I don't want to do anything I can. I want to make sure I do everything I can to make sure I don't turn her away from me. It's the same principle with God. Hmm. Why would I want to walk into his presence stinking and smelling like the world and smelling like I've had a night out on the town? Uh, I don't want, I, I, I remember Jesus when it, he said, why have you forsaken me? It was like God turned his face away from him. He turned away. And it, that was the part that was probably harder than anything else, the rejection of that. I don't want him to ever have a reason to turn away from me. 
I want him to look at me and have a smile. So get the sin out. The image gets removed. So once the sin is gone, the image is restored. Once the sin is out, then we, can, we don't have to walk beneath our privileges anymore. We can walk where he wants us to walk. Today is the day to restore God's image in your life. Today, the first Sunday of 2022, God wants to restore his, his image in your life. The image that he made you in. What would happen in 2022 if we all walked out what God had for us in our lives? To the fullest extent of our destiny that he planned for us and he put on us and he stamped into our DNA. How would 2023, the first Sunday of 2023, look different than today? (laughs) You think there'd be one or two more people in here? You are the son of God. You are the daughter of God. Lucifer wanted to ascend and be like God. You are like God. You're made in his image. He stooped down and made you out of dust. Breathed into you the breath of life. He didn't have to. He didn't breathe into the deer and deer are breathing oxygen. But he stooped down and breathed into you the breath of life. He put his breath in you. You see, Lucifer tried to do through performance what you do through birth. Lucifer tried to do through performance. I will ascend. I will be like. All you got to do is just be. Huh. Is that, does that mean anything to anybody? You, what do you got to do to get daddy's approval? That's all. You just got to be. Stop trying to be a human doing before you are a human being. (sighs) I wish I could. We've got to be a human being first. But for so long... We have felt like we had to do to get approval so we could be. We're trying our best to not do that with our grandkids. We we tried with our kids, but we don't want them to think the only reason we cheer for them is for something they do. Oh, baby, aren't you so smart? Yay, aren't you so smart? Last night, we're sitting at the table having dinner, having a family dinner, and she's done in the high chair, and so Nick's got her, and he's sitting her on the table, and you know why? Because she's the grandkid. She can do whatever she wants. And so, sitting on the table, and she goes, he, we've been doing, uh, Grayson, where's your nose, all this? And so, he said, Grayson, where's daddy's nose? And he, she reached out and went, bam. Oh, you're so smart. Yay! And she goes, Yay! Where's daddy's head? And she reached over and did like that right there. Yay, you're so smart. Yay. She goes, yay. We're trying to, we want to encourage her, but we don't want her to think the only time she gets approval is when she does something. But that's what we do as humans. We teach our children, we teach our family that when you do, we cheer. When you be, we don't do anything. But God said, all you got to do to get my approval is just be. Because anything you do will fall short anyway. Hmm. Would you stand please? I'm going to close with prayer.
And then we're going to take the Lord's Supper. Hmm. Father, I just, I just say I love you. We, we love you. We thank you for what you do in our lives. We thank you for your, your mercy. Thank you for your blessings. We know we don't deserve it. We, sometimes we feel like we need to acknowledge that, but we, we know we don't deserve it, but we want to say thank you. But Lord, it's more than that. It's more than what you do. It's who you made us. That we want to say thank you, Lord, for simply making us who we are. And Lord, this morning, I asked, I asked for your presence to touch every single person. Lord, I call forth the image that you created us in. I call forth the destiny in each person in this room that you put on us before we were even born. I call forth the true DNA. So that we would be, so that we would be, God, who you made us to be. Now, I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for that, Lord. This morning, I want to just give this invitation. This, this will take a little bit of boldness. Most of my invitations do. But this will take a little bit of boldness this morning. But if you would just be so bold as to say, Pastor Ben, I don't really feel like I've been living in the right image. I've been doing, I've been trying to do, I've been trying to get through doing, I'm trying to get approval through doing. But he wants me just to be. And I want to just be able to be. I just want to fulfill his destiny in my life. That's you this morning. Would you just slip your hand up? Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Huh. Father, every person that raised their hand, I thank you so much for them. Thank you for the boldness in their heart, Lord. And Lord, right now, huh, I just pray you would begin to reveal that destiny. Re re restore that destiny right now. Restore that life of just being able to be of just being able to be who you made us to be because we're your son because we're your daughter we don't have to do to get approval we, we just are and that's how we have approval we no longer have to do through performance now we just do it by birth it's who we are and I pray that you would touch each one of them right now Yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen. The band's going to sing and play. If you'd like, I'd love to pray with you uh, this morning, give you that opportunity uh, for the next couple of minutes. Amen. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small, child of weakness. 
darkness watch and pray find in me thy all Jesus paid it all all to him I owe sin have left a crimson stain he Now, indeed, I find thine power and thine alone can change a leper's spots and melt a heart of stone. Jesus paid it all. all He washed it white as snow. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left the crimson stain. He to uh, having our Lord's Supper. Is there ever, does everyone have anyone need? We got a couple up front. Darren, please. And three. And I need one. Four. Anyone else that we missed? Five. Six. Bring the basket. Yeah, it's on the front row. And Darren, if you just bring us to also. Frank's having a fit. I moved out of the light. Streaming is going to be messed up. Sorry. Thank you, sir. You know, when I, was a, when I was a child, this was the most sacred and the scariest service we ever had because of the, what was, the way this was presented. And it was, I mean, it was so heavy. We had a church of probably 120 people and about 30 showed up because of the way it was presented. And we certainly would not ever be able to say what I'm about to say. I was just eating an Altoid and now I'm about to take communion. Never done that before. Not sure how that's going to go in the mix. We shall see. It was, you couldn't even smile during a communion service because it was so heavy. You had to make sure. Now, is it important that we do our best to live right? Yeah, but our best is short anyway. So uh, here's, here's the way I love to present communion. This is a fresh start. 
Whatever you've done, today is over. Jesus, please forgive me. That's all it takes. Lord, make me in your image. This is just a symbol. We know that. But Lord, make me. That's our prayer right now. I want everyone, if you would, please close your eyes and say, Lord, today, make me in your image. There's something powerful on that right now. Make me in your image, Lord. As we take the bread. And then just, as you will, just take the bread. All things new. Amen. I'm no longer who the world says I am. Now I'm who you say I am. Amen. Take the cup. I spoke this blessing over us. Friday at our Christmas Eve service. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift his countenance upon thee and give you peace. But I think better than me finishing that, what I'd like for us to do this morning is I'd like for my wife to sing that over you if she could. Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Hands out, and if you'd do that just this morning, that's a receiving posture, if you would. I'm sorry to interrupt her, but I just want to do that too. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace Amen 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 Amen
Let us pray. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Father, we are glad to be in your presence this morning. You are here. We have sung praises at your feet and we have heard your word shared. And we have remembered your love for us through your son, Jesus. We thank you for the cross. Oh, but we thank you for an empty tomb. Through these two, we have forgiveness and life that is eternal. As we leave today, Father, help us to remember that we are made new. We are in your image. As we leave, let us serve and love. Let us love you by loving others and serve you by serving others, Father. May we be your hands and feet, your smiles, your hugs. There's people hurting, lost, and searching. And because we know you, Jesus, we have an answer for them that we can share. And I come full circle, Lord. It has been good. And I am glad that I was in your house. And everybody said, you're dismissed. <laughs>